Hey team, Chef Eric here, hope you're doing well. Today I wanna to introduce you to a sandwich I've been dreaming about. Tons of provolone, the, the, the pool cheese thing, everything, okay? Uh, big pieces of bread, lots of onion, mushrooms, bell pepper, and I know some of you are saying, whoa, 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 those don't belong in a Philly cheesesteak. The, you know, the mushrooms and the peppers, it's gonna provide a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of crunch, enough of that, let's just get to the action. Here we go. So first things first with this, we're gonna trim the fat tail end of this ribeye off. And interestingly enough, this will turn into a burger video down the road, so not wasting that. But now we're left with this really beautiful chunk of ribeye. And I'm gonna trim this outer fat off just a little bit too. And now we're gonna season our Mondo steak. Today we're gonna to be using Lane's Barbecue Brisket Rub. Heavy on the salt, heavy on the pepper. And we're gonna have another opportunity to season this in a little bit, but I wanna make sure that some of it gets smoked and seared on the outside of this beautiful piece. Now, uh, when we're used to smoking ribeyes, we're used to saying what, 225, 300, um, not much hotter than that. This is gonna be a hot smoke. So we're smoke searing this ribeye, and then we're gonna work on the vegetable prep on the other side. Let me show you what I mean. And we're stabled at about, so we're, we're at about 525 degrees right now. And I'm just gonna sneak this wood chunk right into the hottest part of the flame of a fire rather than we want combustion. Look, we got it automatically. Look at that, beautiful. Sometimes I like to put the wood chunk directly on the, uh, the grill grate and it dries it out enough so that I get clean blue smoke right off the bat. And as you can see, we reached that combustion state and we've got that. So grill grate goes back on. Hot smoke sear begins. So traditional Philly cheese steak does not have the mushrooms or bell peppers, but I like it for color contrast. I like it for the sweetness. Uh, and I just like a little variety. So whenever I'm cutting mushrooms, I like to do assembly line style. I move raw product, working space, finished product. And so we'll just start by slicing the mushrooms. Let's work on getting our onions. There is nothing better than a caramelized onion on a sandwich with hot cheese and steak. I mean, just get out of here with that. Well, maybe one thing, mushrooms and bell peppers added to it. Let's open this up and just take a look at it. Uh, you don't have to worry about white billowy smoke. When, you, when your grill is rocking and rolling like this is, you just have great combustion and great smoke. So let's go ahead and add our mushrooms to the cast iron griddle, our onions, all right, pepper. Beautiful. Make a little grill estate on your, on your plancha. Red bell pepper, onions, and mushrooms are all caramelizing on the cast iron griddle. Hot smoke sear is going on the ribeye. Uh, I'm thinking about what's next. I've got a serrated knife, so when that ribeye comes off, I'll be able to get thin slices. I'm gonna use two spatulas to kind of toss those vegetables together as they reduce and caramelize. I got my cheese, I got my butter, I got my bread. We got everything we need. Let's get them. A little duck fat spray will go a long way, and that's just gonna increase connectivity. Let's season our vegetables a little bit. Oh yeah. And now that we've got the oil and the seasoning on there, one more of these and then push it flat so we continue to get that even caramelization. Right, I'm going to close the dome and let this ribeye smoke for just another minute. Then we'll take it off and we're going to slice with a serrated knife so we can keep it nice and thin. Then I'm thinking butter on the griddle, thin slices of steak, and we'll start toasting off that bread to finish this sandwich. Oh, we got a melted cheese too. How can you forget? It's all about the melted cheese. Now, those of you thinking we're using cheese whiz, we're not, right? We got that provolone. Um, what is the loneliest cheese? Provolone, <laughs> provolone. Got them, dad jokes for days. Uh, you know, I feel like you can get away with that when you're standing next to the grill. No? No. Yeah, no? <laughs> Folks in the comment section down below, uh, tell, give us a good, clean dad joke, okay? Yeah. Vegetables look sensational. Let's go ahead and bring them onto our cutting board. Let's go ahead and grab our steak off as well. And without even allowing it to rest, it doesn't need to rest. It's just blister seared on the outside. 
uh, the smoke is locked into that crust and that's gonna permeate throughout the entire sandwich. Really exciting. So let's stand it up. Again, I do like to use a serrated knife here so that we can keep it thin. Each one of those teeth just kind of grabs into it. So a little positive pressure and a thin slice. I like to use ribeye for Philly cheese steaks just because of the marbling in here and that's gonna melt and just give us a very tender bite. Ah, oh, look at that. And this would make an incredible roast beef sandwich just as is, you know? I'm just cutting great pieces. Now I'm gonna flip to the other side just to make sure that bark's mixed in evenly. Beautiful. Gorgeous pile of thinly sliced ribeye. Uh, let's get our, our bread on the grill and toast it. I'm gonna give the bread a little smush, a little positive pressure, and then I'm gonna take just a little bit of butter and smear it right on, right before we grill it. All right, our grill is still sitting at that nice 500 to 550 degrees. And we're just gonna go right on. Now while that's going, we can put another globular butter right there, and we're gonna start seasoning our beef. Notice I'm making the size of it, the size of the sandwich. I'm gonna hit it with a little more seasoning. Make sure we're not scorching our bread. Oh yeah. I'm gonna give this pile a little toss. We're gonna put the vegetables right on top. Oh yeah. And then slice provolone right on top of that. Oh my gosh, this is, this is the stuff dreams are made of. Now, close the lid for one minute. While the dome is closed, we're gonna put a little Duke's mayonnaise on our butter bread. <laughs> This is not a sandwich for the faint of heart. I'm telling you, this is, this is full contact sandwich making. All right, let's take a look. Oh yeah. Now using the same motion, we're gonna drop right on the bread. Ooh, dangerous business. <laughs> Taking bets. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do this Look at this. Whoa. <laughs> Yo, can we just take a second to look at what just happened? I'm not talking about recap and, and the process of it. We just made a sandwich that's worth taking a shower after you eat it. I mean, this is crazy. This is not generally my kind of food, but when I see it, if you're gonna turn that down, you're out of your mind. This is a two pound hot sear smoked ribeye Philly cheesesteak with the addition of some mushrooms and bell peppers. Uh, you know, and, I, and I, I just absolutely love everything about what I'm seeing here right now except for the fact that I got a good shirt on and I don't even know how to take a bite of this thing. I brought one of these guys. You're gonna go full anaconda. Yeah, but let me, let me just kinda. That works. There we go. Little positive pressure goes a long way. All right. Let's see how we did. Oh, jeez. Huh. Look at that. That's just. You know, you've got a, a mixture of this great smoke seared bark, uh, the caramelization of some of the ribeye that, that was uh, caramelizing in the butter, and then you've still got some nice uh, rare to medium rare pieces. So, all right, let's 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 try to take a bite out of this thing. <laughs> Should you cut a smaller piece? Yeah. I mean... Well, I had the napkin in that. No, absolutely not. You know, we got we got Jeez. This is like stunt food. This is like the state freaking bear or something, you know? But look at that bite right there on the corner. I don't know what state fair you're going cheese. to that has that, but Dude. I'd like to go there. Yeah, well, you're here, buddy. Here we go. Hold. Wow. I gotta go in for another one. Look at that one right there. Hmm. And you kept your shirt clean. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. The hot and fast 
Philly cheesesteak, I mean, it's 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 delectable punishment. You know what I mean? You, you're not gonna know when to stop on this thing. I guess we could do it like party style and slice it a couple more times and then put toothpicks and share it, but this is some. This is one of those things that you become a closet eater. You're gonna be messy if you don't wear a nice shirt. You get in there, you make this thing, uh, you sit down in the shade, you get a couple couple beverages and just freaking wash the derby or something. You know, I mean, this was this was fantastic. Again, I, I I don't get the opportunity to cook like this often, but that was a lot of fun. It was hot. It was fast. It was bold. It was delicious. I love everything about it. Folks, in the comment section down below, tell us what you would put or what you wouldn't put on your Philly cheesesteak. I really want to know because uh, I could see getting into this pretty good, okay? Uh, thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, do leave us a comment. From our backyard to yours, cheers and happy grilling.